Hey all, my name is Samuel Apio, an electrical engineering student at the City College of New York. For this presentation, we will set the stage for exploring religious art from the third to the sixth centuries. We will emphasize on the transition from early Jewish and Christian art to the elegance of Byzantine architecture. In this exploration, we will also discover how each artwork represents the spiritual beliefs of its time and reflects the societal, political, and historical significance through the ages. Each piece of art gives us a peek into what life was back then, what was important to people, and how they connected with their beliefs. First, we begin with the Menorahs and the Ark of the Covenant. In the third century, the, Ro the Roman Empire was a melting pot of different faiths and cultures. Juda Ju Judaism, with its deep history and traditions, was both preserved and challenged in this environment. The artwork of the menorahs and the Ark of the Covenant, hidden in the catacombs, showed community practicing their faith away from the public eye. The menorahs with the branches suspended out like the sun rays and the Ark of the Covenant are both prominent symbols in Jewish tradition. Visually, they connect the Jewish religion to its foundational rituals and roots, serving as an actual testament to God's covenant with the people of Israel. The artwork also strengthened community identity and cohesiveness by reminding their common origin and faith at a time when such reminders were essential to preserving Jewish culture. The painting style successfully conveys the religious nature of the symbols represented. The choice of simple lines and shape to depict such crucial holy symbols reflects early Jewish art emphasis on symbolism. The next piece of artwork we will look at is the wall with the Torah niche. Excavators uncovered a Jewish home synagogue in the Roman city of Dura Europos, which is now located in Syria. The earliest Dura Europos synagogue had an assembly hall, a separate chamber for women, and a courtyard. The depiction of Moses' stories in the synagogue uses strong lines and flat colors, indicating an additional connection with Near Eastern art traditions that emphasize more stylized and symbolic depictions. The artists created an immersive experience by integrating the story of Moses throughout the chamber, reinforcing the Torah's lessons and the historical narratives that are fundamental to Jewish identity. The Torah niche, an important part of the artwork, contained the Torah scrolls, the core of Jewish religious life. Its representation in this contest highlights the sacred status as well as its crucial function in community worship. This design feature turned a piece of a home into a holy space, highlighting the Torah's role in directing everyday life and spiritual practice for Jewish people. Transitioning from the Jewish religion and exploring Christianity, the first Christian artwork we'll look at is the model of a wall and baptismal front with fresco decorations. On one side of the courtyard was a big hall that could seat 60 to 70 people. And next to it was a smaller, extensively decorated chamber with a water tank reserved for baptism, which is the central rite of Christian initiation. The fresco paintings around the baptismal font re reveals early Christian theological foundations. In this painting, Adam and Eve's fall from grace is just a post with a larger image of the Good Shepherd, which represents Jesus, who came to earth to care for and guide his followers. The choice of imagery reinforces the transformative power of baptism, symbolizing the believer's belief to sin a rebirth into a new life in Christ. <laughs> we'll also be looking at early Christian sculptures before the fourth century, which, which was much more uncommon than paintings. An interesting collection of smaller sized marble sculptures discovered in Asia Minor in the 1960s contains a delicate carving of the Good Shepherd. This statue likely has been constructed for a Christian setting as it was discovered besides sculptures depicting the life of the prophet Jonah, another common topic in early Christian art. The Good Shepherd sculpture serves as a visual metaphor 
for Christ's role as the protector and guide of his followers. This, th this theme, central to Christian doctrine, emphasizes the personal and compassionate nature of Christ's leadership. The image of the shepherd and the with the lamb underscores the individual care and salvation offered by Christ to each believer, a powerful message of hope and inclusion for the early Christian community. Next, we'll discuss the oratory of Gala Placidia. The chapel's top walls and vaults are beautifully decorated with mosaics, with vein marble panels covering the walls. The four major arcs and vaults are decorated with floral and geometric designs, while the walls above them have statues of standing apostles gesturing as orators. The mosaics at Gala Placidia Auditory make up an important turning point in Christian art, bringing in more complex narrative and symbolic representations. These pieces of art not only enhance the place in which they're displayed, but also serves as an outlet for theological and religious learning, reflecting the complex relationship between art, faith, and society in early Christian times. The oratory of Gala Placidia with these beautiful mosaics serves as an enduring testament to the richness of Christian narrative art and its ability to convey deep thoughts. The final artwork to be discussed in a Christian faith will be the Good Shepherd. The concept of a shepherd caring after a flock of sheep or, or taking home a weak or missing lamb first or originated in the art agrarian settings and has since become a powerful and positive image. The Good Shepherd is not widely regarded as a Christian symbol, but it wasn't always the case. The Asian Greeks and Romans depicted Hermes as a shepherd holding a lamb. The artwork shows the core of Christian teachings and the growth of Christian representation, demonstrating the faith's increase in relationship with visual arts for conveying theological concepts this masterpiece emphasizes the immense stature of Jesus Christ in Mosaic. To conclude this presentation, we will look at the Hagia Sophia from the Byzantine Empire. Following the deadly urban Nika riots in 532, Justinian launched the building and repair effort in Constantinople. And a little of these architectural designs or the ancient imperial city survived. The Church of Hagia Sophia is a stunning exception, representing both imperial strength and Christian glory. Its innovative design and spiritual importance represent an apex in human attempts to manifest the divine on earth through the form of architecture. As a bridge between the earthly and the holy, Hagia Sophia stands as a, as a testament to the Byzantine Empire's inventiveness, faith, and creative vision, encompassed by its cultural, technical, and religious objective. To conclude, our journey through these seven artworks exemplifies religious art and architecture's transformation, transformational potential in expressing and influencing human understanding of religious faiths. Every artwork not only provides an insight into the religious practice of its period, but also works as a mirror, reflecting the relationship of art with society, through society and history. Through these religious representations, we can see the growth of faith as a vital force in human civilization, always pushing forward the boundaries of art and architecture. Thank you very much for attention and for your time.